Hey there guys, Chris from the Tiger Den, doing a second Final Fantasy 7 video tonight. I'm bust these into two parts, but uh, this is going to be a video about the Remake development team. Introducing the Final Fantasy 7 Remake development team. Uh, I just did a video yesterday, or I just posted a video yesterday about the screenshots and details that they've kind of been sprinkling out for the Final Fantasy 7 Remake. We're getting there. March, right? We're getting there. Uh, provided it's not delayed. So, uh, this screenshot that I covered yesterday, it's amazing. Aerith looks awesome. Love the textures and the dress. Love the hair. Love the band. This actually makes Advent Children a full, like, functioning movie look like poo. Just kidding. Advent Children's awesome. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake arrives on PlayStation 4 March 3rd, 2020. Ahead of launch, members of the development team have shared their unique personal thoughts and insights on both the original game and bring the reimagining of the iconic RPG to life. This was an interesting read for me when I first read it. I want to share it with you, talk to you about my thoughts. Let's dig into it, starting with our producer. Okay, so... In several years following 2009, when I was running around all over the world promoting the Final Fantasy XIII series, I had the opportunity to speak to many fans and journalists. The questions that I always got as we got up to part ways was, when are you making the Final Fantasy VII Remake? It was to the point where it almost felt like an alternative way to say goodbye, so eventually I started preemptively giving my response to the questions before they asked it. If we were to create a remake like that now, it would be an enormous amount of data, and who knows how many years it would take. But if the right time comes along, we just might do it someday. This is how I'd respond back then, who knows how many hundreds of times. To all the people I had a chance to meet back then, the right time has finally arrived. For the Final Fantasy VII Remake developers who worked on the original game have come aboard once again as core members, including himself, uh, the director, the co-director, um, as well on story and scenario. Additionally, we have also have people like uh, the original co-director who are now part of their development team, who's oh who was just a, yeah who was just a fan of Final Fantasy VII back then, bringing in some young blood. And my delight, creators from younger generations all over the world have come forth upon hearing news of the remake's production. While ensuring that the spirit of the original game is kept intact, they are adding to it the power of a new generation. As a result, the game is about to be born. The game that is about to be born surpassed even my expectations as the one who voiced the desire to take this endeavor on in the first place. In fact, the one who's looking forward to playing it the most right now might actually be me. I believe that. I 100% believe that if you read this guy's interviews post Final Fantasy VII on the other games he worked on. This man lives, breathes, and eats Final Fantasy VII. Like, he <laughs> loves it. So... I 100% I believe that. And I will say, I think it's important. I think if they remade this game the way Monolith Soft does, where it's like, let's bring in the same tired-ass people who made the game to begin with to just remake the same game. You know, kind of like they're doing with that remake for... Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Xenoblade Chronicles. Yeah, let's, uh, let's bring out our busted-ass Wii U game. You know... And, and remake that on the Switch. Because Xenoblade 2 doesn't have performance issues on the Switch. Let's just remake an old one rather than, you know, move the ball forward at all. This is what I'm talking about. This is the stuff I like. Alright, Nomura, Director of Concept and Design. I started up... Uh, so, I read this. I don't necessarily believe this. I started up the Final Fantasy VII Remake project around the time of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII... We'd gone through Advent Children before Crisis, Crisis Core, and Dirge of Cerberus, and I was planning this by myself for about a year as the fifth and final entry to the compilation. So he's saying he's been working on the music since way back then. I mean, if that's true, Nomura, you deserve, like, three hugs and a cuddle. That's, that's amazing dedication. I'm not sure that I'd buy it. I mean, you could have been playing around with a couple of tracks, but actually, like, starting the project... That may be a stretch. Uh, since the initial plan and my first idea as other projects took shape, I became very busy as they moved forward, but I never stopped thinking about Seven. Neither have I. As such, I feel like I'm looking forward to the release as much as anyone, as I've been carrying around these ideas for a long time. Opportunities for discussing our true intentions are few, but with regard to the size of the game that many are asking about, there's no reason at all to worry. Even in this Midgard portion alone, 
The density and volume are so great, I had to give directions to lighten them. With regards to new characters of whom I said during past interviews that <laughs> there would be none, though they aren't main characters, their numbers ended up growing considerably in the process of creating a rich depiction of Midgar. When you think of Midgar's final boss, you probably think of the Motor, but in this game, new bosses will appear and add to the excitement of the story even more. I've already begun working on the next one as well, but I'm confident that playing through this title will expand your expectations, just like the world that extends beyond Midgar. Until next time. So, this is where I'm going to stop for a hot second, for obvious reasons. Uh, one... He just mentioned the last boss of Midgar in the original Final Fantasy VII and said, eh, kill that because that's not the final boss here. That's pretty much what he alluded to here. There's new bosses. That's not the final boss. Get hyped. Secondly, he talks about the length of this game. There was a lot... A lot of people are criticizing... Uh, not a lot of people. I've heard some vocal people criticize the remake being split into at least two parts. And that Midgar did not take very long. And I think part of that isn't Midgar's fault. I think the Midgar story could be huge. There is a lot going on there that we never see, that we never hear about. There's characters that were shown that seem intriguing, that are never developed. Midgar is huge. So the idea that we're just going to blow through it as fast as we did on one of the very first 3D games on the PlayStation 1 was ridiculous to begin with. I think there's more than enough lore and story, and let's assume that some of the hinting we've heard that they're incorporating some Crisis Core stuff is actually touched upon in Midgar as well. Uh, let's say it's not, and we have this uh, new Sephiroth stuff in Midgar. I, I'm perfectly confident that when they say that this is going to be a full, like, full Final Fantasy experience, even though it's only one part of a greater Final Fantasy VII experience, I wholeheartedly believe them. I see no reason not to believe them based on everything we've seen and heard. Now, if the game comes out... And, you know, March 3rd, March 4th, I'm beating it in 12 hours. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to tell you guys, egg on my face, I was freaking wrong. And this, this is terrible. This is a problem. But I'm telling you right now that my faith in this team, in this company, in, in, in this series, I believe that this is a winner. So that's, that's just my beliefs. You can choose to, to be, you know, cynical about it. I'm going to choose not to be. Uh, let's jump down to the story and scenario. Najima, my dude. Uh, this guy just, A, has glorious hair. We can all just get on that glorious hair. Uh, it must have been the very beginning stages of developing the Final Fantasy VII Remake that I got to see the remake version of Cloud for the first time. It wasn't post-Advent Children Cloud with kindness brimming from within. Rather, here was a young man with fiery features looking straight at me through the screen with aggression in his eyes, and I knew right then, oh, this is it. This time, it was the cloud uh, that I needed to depict. When Cloud came to Midgard and was hired by Avalanche, this was the sort of look that he would have had on his face. So I revisited the experience that he'd had in his life so far, Crisis Core, baby, Thinking of the effect that each individual event would have had on him, his attitude towards his childhood friend Tifa, cough, I love her but I don't want to tell her, how would he act towards Barrett, dude's like a second dad to him, what sort of distance would he keep while interacting with passersby on the street, I picture the scene in Midgar in my mind and imagine Cloud moving through it, write new lines of dialogue to add for him, this is how Cloud from the remake version came to be. Excuse me. So what this dude is telling you is from the ground up, he defined this character probably for the first time. Because we didn't get this kind of stuff in Final Fantasy VII. While Final Fantasy VII is a genre-defining great game, some of this stuff was just not in there. I mean, look at what they were doing. So much of it was groundbreaking at the time that some of this stuff got left by the wayside. And the, the fact that they're able to revisit it for us fans... And obviously their own pocketbooks. But us fans and give us this. It was an exciting task to introduce a new current of 
when to oh a new current of when to Final Fantasy 7 but at the same time there was some fear the original game used cartoon like stylized art and the story was completed by players using their imagination to supplement portions that couldn't be depicted as a result even if they were seeing the same scene the information they took away from it and how they interpret it differed depending on the viewers perhaps that's what might be considered a narrative form of storytelling nowadays in the remake there will be much less room for player imagination this fact will probably change the feel of the story considerably people who know the original might not know how quite to take it such as the fear that i have but i also have conviction it should be possible to feel a much deeper connection to cloud as you join alongside him it would be amazing if you could feel the fire flame within him and this is great he's right uh, you know for the playstation one it was kind of like playing dungeons and dragons first edition versus fifth edition a lot more was just kind of left nebulous like out in the out in the ether you had to kind of do half the footwork for them because that's just the technology and resources that were available that's not the case anymore and now they're giving you a definitive experience that allows you to connect to the characters in a way that we previously were not allowed to boom i love it okay go to the co-director here we go when the original Final Fantasy VII was released, I was just another student who dreamed of being in the gaming industry. I, of course, played the game, but also reread the guidebook. Oh, right there with you, brother. Over and over again, my heart stole by the engaging universe. I remember wishing strongly that I'd be able to create a game like it someday. Well, fast forward, my friend. Tell that younger version of yourself it gets better. 22 years later, that student who dreamed of Final Fantasy VII is now involved in developing the remake. I can't help but feel like it's fate. In this title, I handled overseeing the development team overall, such as deciding development milestones, constructing a workflow using the Unreal Engine, and taking responsibility for the game design. Here I met staff members who were involved in the original game, who entered the industry with childhood dreams of Final Fantasy VII just like me, and those who were drawn by the allure of Final Fantasy VII and joined the dev team from overseas. It was a gathering of amazing creators with passion and ambition towards the game, all I have is gratitude for having the opportunity to meet this team. Ugh, this is a kid just living the life. With all this in mind, I've considered the following phrase important to read, respect for the original. Final Fantasy VII Remake takes on the challenge of creating something that's created specifically thanks to the technological power and entertainment quality that matches the current generation, while treating the captivating elements of the original game with respect. For those who have played it, new but familiar. For those who haven't played it, experience the charm of Final Fantasy VII, with moved the hearts of, which moved the hearts of many now created with the most exciting modern technology available. I hope you enjoy it. And I'm just going to put that out there. Final Fantasy VII is the best looking game of all time. I'm just going to say it. Everything we've seen from it right now, visually, it is the best looking game to date. <sighs> Alright, co-director. For the original game, I joined the project as a planner who was just starting out my career. Oh my god, what a what an interesting way to start your career. Working, like, just being a planner on the original Final Fantasy VII. Working on Sector Seven slums and Wall Market. In producing the remake, the thoughts and feelings I had then, just starting out, were revived. At the same time, I took on the challenge of new methods of expression that I'm able to execute now that I have the experience. The original version was a forerunner when it came to RPGs that used three... DCG, but the characters were made of polygons. The dialogue was in text only, and cameras weren't able to be used for cutscenes. In Final Fantasy VII Remake, we're using the newest visuals, voice acting, and character facial expressions to redesign the universe to be more realistic. By increasing the realism of the universe within the city of Midgar, which is made prosperous by Mako Energy, we of course also reimagine the characters who reside there, like Cloud and Tifa, more vividly as living, breathing human beings, depicting their daily lives and feeling in a more in-depth manner. We took care to remake not only the main characters, but characters like Johnny and the Shinra middle manager who I created back then. Please keep your eye out to see how they make their new appearances. Additionally, when remaking the Honey Bee Inn at the Wall Market, we revived it as a pantheon of entertainment, which couldn't be realized back then. Here, the scene that many have been eager to see where Cloud disguises himself. Please enjoy. Oh. The, the care. I, the care that goes into this. Uh, going down the graphics in VF Director, I created the effects for the original Final Fantasy VII, and back then the scope of development was so exorbitantly massive that I threw myself into tasks for which I was responsible without even fully understanding what sort of game we were creating. 
Near the final stages of development, when I finally tried playing the test version, I remember being surprised by the graphics and depth of the story, as well as how fully realized it was. I remember enjoying the game as a player, and it's been 22 years after that, and I'm participating in the remake as a developer, and today, I'm able to experience the impact and fun similar to that of the previous title. For the remake, I mainly directed the effects section, while also crossing over into the other sections for decisions and directions on overall graphics. Among the majority... Among the many major games that celebrated for their photorealistic graphics, Final Fantasy VII is a little different. Not only is it realistic, but I believe you'll notice that it incorporates playfulness in the design and colors for an originality not found in other games. Effects are an area that is particularly conductive to expressing various elements of playfulness. I hope you'll enjoy various effects that are not only beautiful, but also convincingly portray realism and magic. Various elements of game design and graphic design have been packed into every corner. Of the vast Midgar. I hope you enjoy. These guys keep talking about Midgar like it is just a just a beast. Uh, the battle director. When I played the original version, I wasn't on the game creation side of things. I remember enjoying it as a player, feeling constant surprise at the evolution of games, three-dimensionality of the stage, and the dynamism of the battle scenes left a strong impression on me. Back then, I never even imagined that I would someday be on the side of creating games or be involved in that game. Speaking of my own personal experience, I have been creating action games thus far, so for this title I took on the challenge of remaking a system that was not of an action game originality and incorporating action elements into it. That is a strong position. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start bumping through some of these. Some of these are just platitudes, which are great. I'm going to start looking for just the eggs for you guys. Uh, Searching for the best balance between action and command elements. I think this kind of goes into the the stuff I posted yesterday, which would be like classic versus, you know, the, the modern combat system. Uh, constructing battle systems for each character. <laughs> if that doesn't get you hot and bothered to hear that they're constructing battle systems for each character, respecting the image of the original version while additionally introducing many new abilities, <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, okay. Environmental director. Assuming this is just going to be, you know... Oh, here we go. Uh, I'd be happy experiencing... Uh, yeah, Midgar's a closed city. We get it. Lighting director. I think we can skip him. Character modeling director. This guy is my jam. You have done a hell of a job, sir. Uh, you know what? I would like to thank this man. Uh, as the character modeling director, Tifa, Cloud, Barrett, all the characters look great. Animation director, more of a fan of the Sega Saturn. Wow, uh, bet you feel ridiculous now, am I right? <laughs> am I right? Uh, I too was a fan of the Sega 32X. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I was a fan of the 32X. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, it had Lunar on it. And it was amazing. Uh, and then that. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, toxic people in the forums. You know, I... I, I can't say enough good things. These, these people are amazing. They do amazing work. The game looks top freaking notch. And, you know, when you read this stuff, the care and the, the thought and the heart that went into crafting this game is, is undeniable. I, I cannot wait until March. Uh, March is, my birthday is at the end of March. Animal Crossing all the way. However, the beginning of March is going to be provided again. It's not delayed uh, all up in this game. I, I am so excited to relive relive the uh first chapter of final fantasy and you know looking at this is it part one of two is it part one of three i really could could care less final fantasy 7 is so much better than xenoblade it's so much better than you know i at least octopath traveler from square enix is a great game i'd still much rather play part one of three of final fantasy 7 than most of the role-playing games that are coming out or have come out I just, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. 
I hope that when the game releases, I hope that when new articles post, you guys will join us for those discussion videos. And, you know, if you're not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Help us out. Help us grow the channel. Uh, we'll keep posting videos. We'll keep, keep on keeping on. And uh, it's late. I'm going to get to bed. But you guys have been great. I've been Chris. This has been the Tiger's Den. Thank you guys so much.